Good day, Grade 10. In this lesson, we're going to be doing some June exam revision, and we're going to be looking at trig functions. So it says, it's a typical exam question, it says sketch the following graph without the use of a table of values. For theta is from 0 to 360 degrees, y is equal to 2 sine theta. And we've already got a graph paper here from 0 to 360, so the first thing you need to do is notice the, the period and it's from 0 to 360 so you don't have to draw anything in the negative quadrant okay next we need to see that y equals sine theta now what they're testing is that a you know the shape of a sine graph and b that you know what this big 2 in front does so let's talk about the shape of the sine graph and I'm going to use this green color and I'm going to draw in the shape of a sine graph normally. So the sine graph's normal amplitude is 1. So let's make this 1 and this minus 1. And as I say in all my lessons, grade 10s, remember that I don't have the facility of an eraser and a pencil and a ruler in this program. So my drawings can be a little bit rough, but you do have the facility of a pencil and an eraser. So if your drawing isn't as neat as you would like it to be, feel free to erase and redraw. And that's why you should be drawing in pencil and not in ink. Okay, now that is the normal y equals sine theta, where it goes through y equals 1 at 90 degrees, 0 to minus 1 and 360. But what does this 2 do? This 2 multiplies the y value of sine theta. So what does it do? It actually is doubles the amplitude, because 2 doubles the amplitude. So basically it is 2 times whatever the normal amplitude is because that 2. So therefore our new amplitude is going to be 2. Okay, so let me change colors. And therefore instead of it going through 1, it's going to go through 2. And instead of it going through minus 1, it's going to go through minus 2. So therefore your graph has just doubled in height. Okay, so it's going to be going up and down then all the way down and all the way up okay so that is what your new graph looks like and that is y equals 2 sine theta okay let's look at another example it says sketch the following graph without using a table of values again for 0 to 360. This time we would y is equal to sine theta minus 3. And again, I am going to draw in, I'm going to draw in the basic y equals sine theta graph. Okay, so therefore we know it goes through 1, it goes through minus 1. What I would suggest you guys do is obviously you don't want to do this on your graph paper in the exam, so I would draw a little sine graph like this and I'd go, okay, fine, I know that sine theta looks like that because I've studied and I know that at 90 this is at 1. But I'm drawing it over here so that you can see exactly what's going on. So we've got it going through 180 and through 360, 360 0 and it goes up. and down and through that and up again. Now what's happening? Now we've got a minus 3. So what is that doing? It's taking whatever the y value of sine theta is at different points and it's subtracting 3 from it. So let's change colors. Okay, so what are we doing? Whatever the y value is at a specific point, we are subtracting 3. So at naught, we're going to go down. Ooh, minus 1, minus... Oh dear. Okay, let's try this again. So this example says, sketch the following graphs without using the table of values from 0 to 360 again. Y is equal to sine theta minus 3. Okay, y is equal to sine theta minus 3. So grade what I would suggest you do is obviously you don't want to do it like I've been doing it on the actual graph so I would suggest you just draw a little rough sketch and go okay well I know that sine theta looks like this I know that sine theta looks like that where this is 1 and this is 90 and this here is 270 and that's minus 1 but I'm going to do it on our graph paper so we can see exactly what happens when we subtract the 3 so we go 0 and because we've got subtracting 3 I'm actually going to make this our number 1 so at 90 we're going through 1 
at 180 we go through naught, at 270 we go through minus 1, and at 360 we go through 0. And I'm going to join the dots as best I can. Right, now let's change color. And obviously, again, you guys don't change color because you're not going to be drawing the purple graph on your graph paper. You're only going to be drawing this new graph. And what is the new graph it says? It says whatever the y value is of sine theta specific points, we are subtracting 3. This is what this means, okay? So we are at naught. Naught, we're going to subtract 3. So it's going to be naught minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. So this graph starts at minus 3. At 1, we're subtracting 3, so it goes 0, 1, 2. At 0, we're back at minus 3. At minus 1, we're now at minus 4, and we're back here again. So the graph now goes like this. You can see it's actually running parallel to the previous graph. It is just 3 units lower. So this is y is equal to sine theta minus 3. And obviously what they want you to do is just draw this and not the purple graph. Okay, now grade tens before I go any further. If you're not understanding what I'm doing here, remember this is a revision lesson. So go back to the week that has trick graphs in it and go through the videos nice and slowly so that you can understand exactly what we're doing. Let's look at another example. Now it says sketch the following graphs without using a table of values. They again, to 360, but this time we've got y is equal to minus 2 cos theta plus 1 y is equal to minus 2 cos theta plus 1. Okay, so let's take this slowly and I'm not going to draw it on here. Okay, first of all, a cos graph. We've been working with sine graphs, now we're talking cos graphs. So, we've got a couple of things happening. The first is that we need to realize we've got a cos graph. The cos graph goes like this, where that is 1, that's 90, this is 180, that is minus 1, and that is there at 360, okay, and this is 270. Now what's happening is we've got a minus 2 cos theta plus 1. So what does the minus do? The minus changes the y value from a positive to a negative. So let's do that. So instead of 1, we've got minus 1. So we're going to be going from here, north stays the same, but instead of at minus 1, we're now at 1. So basically, the minus flips the graph. It flips it. Okay. So we're going like this. Terrible graph. Okay. But we're just getting an idea. What does this 2 do? We've had a 2 before. What does it do? It increases the amplitude. It doubles it. Okay. So now... We are doubling the amplitude, so instead of it being at minus 1, we're now going to be at minus 2. Instead of being at 1, we're going to be at 2 and back down to minus 2. So it makes it bigger, it stretches it up and down. Stretches it, there we go. And again, you shouldn't be having such a pointy graph, my apologies. And then finally, what does this plus 1 do? The plus 1 moves everything up, up by 1. Plus 1 moves everything up by 1. Okay, so this, remember, was at 2. So now it's going to start looking confusing. So let's just choose another color again. And I'm going to choose... What shall we choose? Shall we choose... What haven't we used? Blue. Okay, so now minus 2, if we add 1, it becomes back up to minus 1. Naught, add 1, goes up to 1. 2 when we add 1 goes up to 3, okay, back down, 1, naught becomes 1, and minus 2 becomes minus 1, so that is my ultimate graph, okay, so let's have a look at this, so instead of it being at minus 2, it is now going to be at minus 1, that's where it starts, we're normally at 90, it is at 0, it's now going to be at 1, okay, at 180, it was at 2 before, but now it's going to be at 3. At 270, it's back at 1. And at 360, it's back at minus 1. So there, there we go. Let me just join the dots. 
And again, if my graph's a little bit skew, I apologize. Feel free to use an eraser when you draw yours. Okay, so that's our graph. Okay, so what have we done? We have flipped it, we've doubled it, and we've moved it up by one. Okay, a little bit complicated, which is why it is better to do this. And if you find this difficult to do it on top of each other because you don't have colors, do them in separate graphs. In fact, in the next one, I'll do that. So the next one says y equals tan theta minus 2. Okay, so it's a little bit easier. y equals tan theta minus 2 from 0 to 360. Why is it easier? Because we don't have a big value in front of our tan theta to worry about our amplitude. So let's think about what a tan graph normally looks like. A tan graph normally looks like this and then it goes up and it has an asymptote over here and then it goes like this and then back up like this. Okay? So we know that tan of 90 is equal to what? Tan of 90. Tan of 90 is equal is the asymptote. So this here is 90 and then there is basically 180 is the period and then this is at 270. So there is another half to this graph or another bit to this graph over there that takes it to 360. So this is my normal graph and the only things we need to know at this, from this graph are our asymptotes that this here is, um, that's 180. And the other thing we know is that at 45 degrees, this is at 1. And here, at 135, this is at minus 1. And here, it should be going through 1 again. Okay, and again, through minus 1. The minus 2 is telling us that we need to move it down by how many points? By 2 points. That is what it's doing. It's moving the y value by 2. So, what we are doing is taking this 1 and moving it down by 2. That the 0 is moving it down by 2. So, the 0 has been moved down 2, so it's now starting at minus 2. Where it normally is at 1, it's going to be at minus 1. So the graph is now going to look something like that. This point here is normally at minus 1. It's now going to be at minus 3. So it's going to look like that. The 180 naught is normally at naught is now at minus 2. So it's going to be doing this and then up. And similarly, where this is normally at minus 1, it's now going to be at minus 3. And the 0 is going to be at minus 2. So it is going to be like that. So now let's plot it. Okay, it looks horrible there, but the whole point is which we just need to realize whatever these values are, we're moving them down by two. So normally, normally this graph is at zero. Now it's going to be at minus two. Ninety is an asymptote. That doesn't change. Okay. Two seventy is an asymptote. That doesn't change. Okay. Normally at 360, this graph is at naught. It's now going to be at minus 2. So we can just draw it like that. Okay. Normally at 180, it's at 0. So it's going to now be at minus 2, which means that your point of inflection is now at minus 2. And then finally, this bit here, which is normally at 45, is now going to be at minus 1. So therefore, this graph looks like that. And remember, they don't touch the asymptotes. And that is the graph. So the whole point is knowing wherever it touches the x-axis, it's been moved down by minus 2, and the only other points we really know are our 45 and our 135 and that. I mean, you do know, you can work the others out, but we don't care about them. And that grade tens is your revision of your trig functions. Again, this was revision so if you didn't understand what was happening, go look at the original videos in the weeks on trig graphs. Have a great day.